Hi guys, it's been a long time since I've done a serious video. Uh, sorry for all the silly ones, but uh, I've been pretty busy at work and uh, don't have any really technical projects that I can share yet, but I can guarantee you that you will like what uh, um, is coming out. Uh, so, uh, around work here, I've been putting some pinball machines and uh, not everyone's familiar with how to turn them on and off and sometimes if they do get turned on, they get left on for days at a time which burns out light bulbs and it's just probably not good to let them run all the time anyway. So I decided to build a circuit with my favorite little chip, the 555 timer, to automatically turn the machines off if they've been left on or turn them on just simply by touching the flipper buttons. So it's a retriggerable monostable. It works by um, a switch that's hooked up to the flipper buttons. On this instance I'm using a uh, reed switch and a magnet glued to the switch stack inside. Um, it could be any type of switch. It could actually um, be part of the switch stack. You could add a couple more reeds to the switch stack or if you have an isolated power supply driving the circuit then you would be able to maybe share one of the normally open or normally closed parts of the a switch like in an arcade machine. Um, I should mention that's Another purpose for this too is to save monitors on arcade machines so they are uh, shut off. So when the switch closes, um, what it does is it discharges a capacitor, which is a pretty large capacitor here, and it's slowly getting charged back up through a uh, uh, resistor network here with a one meg ohm um, potentiometer so you can adjust the time that it takes to time out. And as it's charging up, it'll hit a threshold and eventually trip a relay that's cutting the mains power. To make it re-triggerable you add a PNP transistor that's also hooked to the switch because the 555 timer is triggered um, input pins pretty much locked out when you trigger it the first time so it, it would have to go all the way to a complete off state before being re-triggered so saying a little PNP here um, pulls this capacitor back towards ground and allows it to be re-triggered over and over and over again until people stop pressing buttons. Um, it's pretty straightforward. I found a relay that um, had 5 volt windings on it that I could drive directly from 555 itself. Um, I found that adding a, a diode alone wasn't enough. It wasn't switching fast enough and I had to add some extra uh, snubber capacitor in here to uh, block some of the inductive kick that was coming back. It was actually uh, making the 555 shut off, um, I mean not not shut off because it was bouncing below the threshold, it was kind of odd. Um, you could put a transistor in here if uh, the relay you find can't um, be driven with the 200 milliamps that's uh, available uh, sourcing from the 555. Uh, of course the 555 could be replaced with any kind of long duration counter or microcontroller whatever you feel like. Um, one other thing, I put it into the machine, I um, spliced it in after the fuse, so if something went horribly wrong in my circuit, at least the fuse would go. And then I put the whole thing into a metal box so that um, if it shorted out, a metal box that was um, hooked to earth ground, so if it shorted out it wouldn't electrocute anyone. And the, the supply voltage um, a good a nice advantage to the 555 is that it um, will run over a wide supply range. I found a little wall wart that runs at 5 volts, but um, this circuit should run just fine. You know, I don't know what it, a conventional 555 tops out at, but it's pretty high. Um, it's, uh, so it could be almost any wall wart that you, you find. Um, I plugged the wall wart into the service jack, and uh, after doing that, I realized that I need to make an addition to the circuit so that uh, there's a service bypass switch so I can disconnect the wall wart from the service jack and get access to that outlet to warm my soldering iron up again. So um, let me show you how this works. Uh, my switch is hooked up to this flipper button right now and currently play field's up and the machine is off but there's power applied to circuit if I hit the button, hitting it now. On comes the machine. It's going to run. I have it set for about five minutes of no activity. It'll shut off. Um, I think it'll be uh, um, will help folks out around here quite a bit, so they can play pinball when they want and not have to worry about shutting it off. 
Uh, I think that's all I have to say about this. Um, look forward to sharing my future projects with you guys. And uh, um, oh, I should uh, uh, say that we uh, this this video is um, going out in memory to Cordek, uh, uh, the inventor of the flipper, um, passed away this last week, which is. Uh, Kind of sad, but he made it to be about 100 years old. So that just goes to show that um, playing pinball has been proven to extend your life. Um, so if you want to live to 100 years old, play pinball. All right, bye guys. <laughs>